Human beings naturally have four states of awareness based on either thinking or not thinking and sleeping and not sleeping. There's the normal waking state where we're awake and we're thinking. There's the dream state or REM sleep where we're thinking but we're not awake. There's the state of deep sleep where we're neither awake nor are we thinking. And then there's the fourth state, the state of thoughtless awareness where we're awake but we're not thinking. The first three states are states that are familiar to all of us as states we experience in our everyday lives. The fourth state is meditation where the constant rising and falling of thoughts comes to an end. Meditation is something that we've all experienced as young children and infants and is something that's as natural to us as swimming is, but something that most of us have forgotten how to do. In this fourth state of thoughtless awareness, we think neither of the past nor of the future. We are entirely in the present moment, in the state of being, and we don't squander the precious moments of life thinking about times that are gone forever or still yet to come. We begin to enjoy ourself, our spirit, our own inner beauty and the beauty of all of creation. We begin to enjoy being and we begin to evolve. And we begin to realize we are not our bodies. And once we begin to accept this truth, the knowledge dawns that there's nothing to fear and we can set out to live life to its fullest. So was Jesus the Messiah or was he not the Messiah? Did he die on the cross and was resurrected on the third day? Or did he go into some sort of deep yogic trance? Or did he simply have a near-death experience like 7,000 people do every day in this country? Was he born of a virgin mother? Or was he conceived naturally just like everybody else? I have no idea. And the more research I've done into this project, the less inclined I am to believe anything. See, the problem with belief systems is that once you start believing something, you stop seeking the truth because you think you've already found it. But you can't get the truth from a book or a film or a teacher. You can only get the truth from one place, and that's deep within yourself. All those other things can do is help till the soil and prepare you for your own personal journey into self-inquiry. The rest is up to you. I do know this much. The more that I've meditated, the more richness and texture I've been able to get out of the things that Jesus said. He was a phenomenal man, arguably the greatest Jewish teacher ever. And he said a lot of really amazing things. And perhaps the most poignant and simplest of all was when he said, seek the truth the truth will set you free. And so I urge you, I implore you, to learn how to meditate. And then when you do, from that sense of knowingness or gnosis, then go back and read the Quran and the Torah and the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads. And when you do, what you'll discover is that each of these books says exactly the same thing. And that when we open up for an interfaith dialogue to discuss our differences, what you'll realize is that we don't have any. Just different ways of expressing divinity, which at the end of the day is a futile attempt to express the inexpressible anyway. Isn't it about time we stopped killing each other in the name of God? Your God is superior to my God. My way of connecting to divinity is better than yours. I mean, what is that about? Can we agree right now to choose a future of peace and harmony for all of mankind? Namaste. A very wise man once asked the question, would you rather be happy or right? And if you've understood the implications made in this film, it's possible that a great many things that we've held on to our entire lives as being true, either on the physical level, intellectually, or even on the emotional level, may not be so true after all. It's okay to be wrong. And in fact, if there's a single point to be made in this film, that's it. And unless any of us were born enlightened, for us to become self-realized means that an unavoidable part of that process is to accept that we were wrong about a great many things. 
Our intellects are bound by our perceptions, and what we perceive is limited by our five senses. From what we've learned through Einstein's relativity and quantum mechanics, what we get through our five senses is actually more unreal than it is real. As they say in the computer industry, garbage in, garbage out. In other words, a computer is only as good as the data that it's fed. We know that there's a limit to reason. There's a small sphere in which human reasoning can operate. Any attempt to go beyond that sphere is impossible, and yet it is beyond this field of reason that therein lies all that humanity holds most dear. The answers to the questions of whether or not there's a supreme intelligence guiding this universe, whether or not there's a God, whether or not there's an immortal soul are all beyond this field of reasoning. Einstein went to his grave unwilling to accept that he was wrong. Are you willing to make that same mistake? Or are you going to be smarter than Einstein and consider the possibility that maybe some of the things that you've held to be true your whole life may not be so true after all? Are you willing to conduct the experiments yourself with an open mind without any preconceived notions and be willing to accept the results no matter where they lead. The quest for human knowledge is a quintessential element of being human. It's part of our nature. We're all scientists, and yet it's up to each and every one of us to embark on our own personal journey of self-inquiry. The truth is out there, beyond reason, waiting for us to discover it.